we're looking at functional flexibility this morning. It seems to be uh, an issue with a lot of people. When I go to the uh, supermarkets where I'm walking down the street, there's uh, you see it everywhere. Yeah? Somebody trying to get out of a car or trying to get in a car, yeah, or trying to put the seatbelt on, or in the in the supermarket struggling to get something from a bottom shelf. Yeah, can be a real problem. And or something like putting shoes on, yeah, just putting the foot up so you can put a shoe on, all of these things can be a challenge. And so when we look at flexibility, it forms an important part of our shunning training, uh, but it's easy to forget to do it. One of my uh, yoga teachers has a saying that if you're flexible when you're young, you'll always be flexible. And that just didn't seem to be the case with me. It's like, if I don't do the exercises, the stiffness creeps up, yeah. And within, and this was in a space of like a couple of weeks, yeah, it's quite remarkable. Uh, I went from being able to uh, have my hands flat on the ground when I was standing up to my fingers only going below my knees. Yeah, that's, that's quite a change, isn't it, in such a short space of time. But I was still in my Qigong energy flow felt great felt very nice yeah. uh, taking good care of the energy and the energy management but it doesn't take care of our flexibility it affects our functional flexibility and so some people might be aiming for like high flexibility so they can have their foot above the head yeah, or bend over backwards or be able to do some amazing gymnastics for me and i think for most of us here as well it's not about that it's more about yeah. Can I get out of bed easy in the morning? Yeah. Can I get up from my chair? Can I, can I go for a walk? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I put my shoes on? Can I put my coat on? So we look at ways in the Qigong in order to help us with that flexibility so that things can move with a little bit more ease. I say we're not necessarily going for the, uh, the top end yoga flexibility, even though you might have it already. But how can we do it? How can we do it? And one of the ways um, is using actually the mind to create the flexibility in the body. There's a lot of research, and we were talking about it in the class last night, about that if your mind thinks it's so, yeah, then it is so. Now, somebody say, well, that's not true, because if I can't walk and I just think I can walk, then I still can't walk. Yeah. So it's not quite as simple as that. But what it does mean is there's a lot of research in and around when you visualize something happening, your body organizes itself in such a way that your muscles respond to that vision, vision yeah, that intention that you could say demand. It could be at an unconscious level as well. I don't know if, you, if you've ever come across... Uh, like uh, uh, this, yeah. I'm not going to hypnotize you, by the way. One person, open your mic yeah, and then visualize where you feel this is going to move to. To move to the right. You're right. My right, see, it's starting to move just to my right and then come back <laughs> to the center. Okay. Hey, okay, that's quite interesting. All right. So this is fun, isn't it? Okay. All right. So what's happening? What, what's happening here? Yeah, it could be energy. I mean, it's all energy. I think that's the correct answer in anything I ask. You could say the answer is energy. Yeah. So and that, that would be fair, wouldn't it? Because it's energy. And it could also be um, called idiomotor. There's some research around that. And, and this is helpful in terms of our flexibility and stuff, is that when, when we have a conscious or unconscious intention to do something, we visualize something happening, <clears throat> the, the muscles move at like these micro levels in order to action the thing that needs to be done. So we can think about that it's our mind that's making this thing move. And, and if I locked my arm in here and didn't move it here, the, the, the little motors of the muscles in my finger the muscles, the fine muscles here, would move enough to make it happen, even if this was locked in. But if we if we hung it from uh, like a clamp, it may not move the same. 
Yeah. So the the idiomotor um, it helps these things move. Now, this is interesting in terms of our own body. From the point of view of the, the body, if we visualize something happening, then the, the muscles will move to make that action. Now, if we think I'm stiff, I'm inflexible, I cannot reach my toes, yeah, then the very same is true because the muscles will move to that. And people have done remarkable things when they say their, their mind has uh, done something that they ordinarily wouldn't do. Yeah? Uh, a child is just about to be crushed by a car and the mother will pick a car up. Yeah? These things have been recorded. E extraordinary um, feats of strength. You could say they're like, uh, like superhero level sometimes. Yeah? So the mind we know is like insanely powerful when it comes to what we can do. And so it's not just thinking it's so. Oh, I can touch my toes. You can't just say it to yourself and then it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. If you visualize it, if you feel it in your body, then you can start to increase your flexibility. Now, you can test this, first of all, by standing up or sitting down and just see where where your flexibility is in relation to your feet or your legs yeah don't strain <laughs> okay don't try and impress yourself or anybody else by straining here what we want to know is without straining yeah where can where can we go to at the moment so at the moment where is comfortable for me is fingertips to toes that's comfortable without me straining yeah fingertips to toes at the moment without straining yeah so just see where you are now if you're already really flexible and you're super flexible and you're at gymnastic level flexibility none of this stuff's really going to make any difference to you because you don't need functional uh, flexibility you've already got great flexibility but for a lot of people that don't have good flexibility or even reasonable flexibility in order to put a seatbelt on, get out of a car, put their shoes on or a sock on without falling over, yeah, that they can't come to the ground to pick something up without struggling, yeah, then these are the functional flexibility things that I'm talking about. Yeah, being able to reach, pick up, bend forwards, yeah, sit down into a chair and get up, or even squat to the floor and come back up, yeah? You know, squat to the floor can be a lot harder for people, and people say, why do I really need that? Well, the squats as exercise actually help you in a lot of other things as well. Okay, so you know where you are. So now let's use what we were speaking about as a way to increase the flexibility. So we're going to Come into an upright and relaxed position where not you're sitting or standing. This can be done both ways. And you close your eyes and have the mouth open. And first of all, just allow your body to relax. That's right. Relax, relax, relax. Allow the muscle to relax. Allow your arms and your hands to relax. Allow your face and your neck to relax. You can allow yourself to gently smile. Yeah? And you can feel your mouth just very gently smiling and your eyes gently smiling. When we smile, it sends a wave of relaxation through the body as well. It can be very useful. If we're grimacing or scowling, then obviously the, the body's going to be a lot tighter. Nervous system more alert in a way that's not going to be helpful for your flexibility here. So we want to relax. Relax in the shoulders and the arms, the chest and the back. And allow the muscles to relax as deeply as they can. So we're going to use two things here, relaxation and visualization. 
And then we can add a third component to relaxation, relaxed in the back and your buttocks and your thighs and your ankles and your feet. So you're relaxing everywhere in your body. So the, so the first test that we're going to do is just see in terms of relaxation, how relaxation helps us in terms of flexibility, okay? So allowing your body to relax, allow your breath to relax. So not trying to manage your breath, not trying to do this really well as well, okay? Not trying to do it really well. Just allowing yourself to relax. Allow the breath to relax. And then when you feel ready, just bending forwards again, coming down towards your toes, whatever way that you were doing it, just sit. So now, quite comfortably, my first knuckles can come to the ground. I'm not straining at all. And in the in the Kung Fu, we call this leopard fist, yeah? This would be snake fingers to the ground. And then this, this is leopard fist. Yeah, so these are good tests of flexibility. Snake, leopard fist, tiger, dragon, palms. Yeah. So different ways of testing flexibility. And of course, if you're super flexible, you may be wrapping your hands around the back of your legs and your head on your down on your shins. Yes. But we're not going for that. We're going for the functional flexibility here. Okay, we just want to test. Okay, give me the give me the thumbs up if if you've got even a small amount of increase of flexibility from doing that. Okay. So from do your relaxation. Yeah. So that's the majority of people. Uh, everybody actually has got an increased flexibility just from the relaxation. And now we're going to go visualization. Okay. So mind level. So again, we go into a relaxed state. And we add visualization. So body relax. You can allow the wave of relaxation to pass through your body again several times if you like. So you feel the body deeply relaxed or as relaxed as you could reasonably go right now. Simply by having the intention to relax. And we have the awareness of relaxation as well, rather than the mind being pulled away, busy into daily tasks. We allow our awareness to come to the sensation of the body, and not competing with ourselves, not trying to do this really well, simply allowing yourself to relax. As you breathe out, feeling a wave of relaxation pass down from the head to the feet, to the tips of your fingers. Do this a few times. Now, wherever you reached before, you know what the, the next sort of level up would be for you, yeah? It might be to actually touch your toes. It might be to get the fingers down or the leopard fist or the tiger or the dragon. Yeah. It might be to go past your knees. Yeah. Or whatever it is that at that next element now with your visualization, see yourself doing this with ease. So as I was leopard that time, uh, won't jump to uh, the dragon, yeah? I'll uh, just move gently and progressively up the scale. So I'll go to tiger, yeah? the fists on the ground. But I'm going to see myself moving with ease and the fists touching the ground. And as I see that in the body, I'm going to feel it as well. I'm going to feel what that feels like as if it was happening right now. So visualize and have felt sense. See yourself doing it with ease. It's very important 
that we see ourselves, not just think. When we feel this whole body, and we can see with the mind's eye or your imagination, you can see with your heart if you like, yeah? You can see with your whole body, but just feel yourself doing that. Feel what it feels like to flow and move with ease of the whatever you're going for now. Now, if you practice this visualization every day, it will accumulate. We're just doing this once. Yeah. But if you visualize every day, it will accumulate enough where it has a remarkable difference on your body. But even if you just do this visualization for two to five minutes, it can have a change. Okay, so now using that visualization, go with it with the physical aspect of your body now, okay? So whatever you visualize, allow that to happen with your real body, yeah? So now my fists are touching my feet with ease. That's what I went for. So we're going to come back up now. We're going to add one more element, which is like the, the secret element of the of the chiyum, of the shining cosmos chiyum, and that's the energy flow. So we use relaxation, visualization, and energy flow. Yeah. And that's the triple cultivation. We've got the body, the relaxation, mind, the shen, and the energy, the chi. So we use the, the three components of the, the chi gong. So we relax, breathe, let a wave of relaxation pass through the body. So my next step up will be the palms touching the ground, the dragon. Whatever it is for you, without straining, see yourself doing this with ease, and then allow your body to gently move and sway as the energy flows through your body. Now, to me, it doesn't matter if somebody says, hey, you're not really energy flowing, that's idiomotor. I don't care. Yeah? What I care about is the outcome. Yeah? Not whether or not somebody can prove or disprove something. I'm looking at the outcomes here. So we can see the outcomes happening for ourselves. We visualize the outcomes. That's one important component. The other is to relax. And here we get the energy flow. So the body now starts to flow and move with ease in any direction, not just forwards and backwards, left and right, around and around, but like a swaying willow, a gentle breeze. And then you feel that energy flowing up your back and over the top. Feel that energy flowing up your back, over the top of the body, down the front of the body. So like a wave of energy coming up the back, down the front, all the way down. From the back of your heels all the way up to the head, all the way down the front of the body to the toes. Yeah, Just feel this wave of energy now flowing through the body. Like being the, the sea, yeah, this wave, the energy of the waves just accumulates and then another wave comes. One wave after the other. And in this wave, see yourself moving into that ease of flexibility. And in a moment, you're going to allow your body to move into that, whatever it is that you're visualizing, you're going to allow your body to move into that for real. Yeah. So you don't stop the energy flow, you just continue and you let the energy flow. So now, do it for real, allow the energy to flow.
So your movement comes from this energy flow where we first relax, then visualize, and then flow. Good. And then you come back up. Let your chi flow for a little bit again. Yeah, you can let go of any visualization now. You can let your chi flow. Let the body gently move and toy. Hmm. Very nice, very gentle. So not only does it increase our flexibility, but it can help change our state of relaxation. Remember, we're not straining at all, not competing just a lamb, but we're only doing this once. If you, if you did this more often like this, then it has that cumulative effect. So come to stillness now, gently think of the belly, breathing into the belly. Breathing out, allowing yourself to relax. Just come into stillness. Few gentle breaths, three gentle breaths. All it takes to return to your center. Then rub your palms together. Gather the eyes, massage around the face and the head. <coughs> Good, have a little move around. So we've got relaxation, visualization and energy flow. Now, relaxation on its own uh, definitely has an impact. Visualization, uh, as a lot of research has shown, can have a remarkable effect on the muscles and not just on the flexibility, but the strength of your muscles as well. Arnold Schwarzenegger used to imagine as he was doing his bicep curls, he would imagine his bicep growing. <laughs> yeah. And then much later on, when they sort of researched these things, they shown that the muscle size can increase simply by visualizing. So we can get stronger by visualizing. We can get more flexible by visualizing. Yeah? So Sifu would say that the mind is the most important aspect because the Shan Cosmos Jigong is mind energy training and different to gentle physical exercise. So gentle physical exercise has its benefits. And we know that when we relax the body, it has an immediate effect on the body. Yeah. So it works. Gentle physical exercise works to exactly what it's supposed to do. Yeah? But when we look at the triple cultivation, when we look at training the mind, the energy and the body, we need to use all those three elements. Yeah. Not just body relaxation. Yeah. So you relax your body, you visualize, and already you're going to be increasing your strength or flexibility. And then you add the energy component as well. And when you add that energy component, it takes you up to that next level. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what it was like for you, but certainly going through that this morning, I wouldn't have been able to go to the palms straight off. But when we add the energy flow component, uh, the palms on the ground became easy. Yeah. Uh, say so this, we only did it once. If we do visualization every day together with the relaxation and add the energy component, that accumulative effect will have a, a big difference. Yeah. So not to like give up on it too early. <laughs> do it once, doesn't work. We're not going to do it. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to practice these things over time as well. It may have an immediate effect on you. Maybe you want to try it out today. If you're getting in your car or something, just visualize yourself getting in the car really easy. And if you're going to put on your shoe, take a pause and visualize yourself putting your shoe on. If you're going to go to the seat back, stop. Breathe, relax, see yourself. And then all of these things start to change. Is the mind over matter? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, does it? Yeah, call it what you like. But it works. That's what counts, yeah.